The very spirit of truth is at your call. The anointing which ye receiveth of him abideth in you. First John chapter 2 verse 27 Seek it, wait patiently for it to guide you into all the truth about all things. John chapter 16 verse 13 have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philistines chapter 2, verse 5. This is the universal mind, which makes no mistakes. Still the intellect for the time being, and let universal mind speak to you. And when it speaks, though it be but a still small voice first kings chapter 19 verse 12 you will know that what it says is truth how will you know you will know just as you know that you are alive all the argument in the world to convince you against truth which comes to you direct Revelation will fall flat and come harmless at your side. And the truth which you know, not simply believe, you can use to help others. That which comes forth through your spirit will reach the very innermost spirit of him to whom you speak. What is born from the outside or intellectual perception reaches only the intellect of him you would help the intellect which is servant to the real mind and when servant but not when master is good loves to argue but when its information is based on the evidence of the senses and not on the true thoughts of the divine mind it is very fallible and full of error lights out Radio, radio, radio. Intellect argues. Spirit takes the deep things of God and reveals truth to man. One may be true. The other always is true. Spirit does not give opinions about truth. It is truth. And it reveals itself. Someone has truly said that the merest child who has learned from the depths of his being to say, Our Father is infinitely greater than the most intellectual man who has not yet learned it. Paul was a man of gigantic intellect, learned in all the law, a Pharisee of Pharisees. But after he was spiritually illumined, he wrote, the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. It does make a great difference in our daily lives what we think about God, about ourselves, about our neighbors heretofore, through ignorance of our real selves and of the results of our thinking. We have let our thoughts flow at random. Our minds have been turned toward the external of our being, and nearly all our information has been gotten through our five senses. We have thought wrong because misinformed by these senses and our troubles and sorrows are the results of wrong thinking. But, says someone, I do not see how my thinking evil or wrong thoughts about God or about anyone can make me sick or my husband lose his position. Well, I will not just now try to explain all the steps by which bad results follow false thinking. But I will just ask you to try thinking true. Write thoughts a while and see what the results will be. Take the thought, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Think these words over and over 
continually for a few days, trying to realize that they are true and see what the effect will be on your body and circumstances. First, you get a new exhilaration of mind with a great desire and a sense of power to please God, then a quicker, better circulation of blood with sense of a pleasant warmth in the body, followed by better digestion. Later, as truth flows out through your being into your surroundings, everybody will begin to manifest a new love for you without your knowing why. And finally, circumstances will begin to change and fall into harmony with your desires instead of being adverse to them. Flesh. Yeshua. Elohim. Hamdu Allah.